Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, and the other day I did a video on how to protect your home from an EMP, and I talked about the importance of having a good surge protection device, as well as some different kinds of ferrites that can be used to protect your home. So a lot of folks wrote and asked if I could do a similar video on protecting their solar power generation system. So what I've done is I've filled the board with two different types of solar power generation systems. These are sort of the types that are available today. There's the centralized inverter, and then there's these micro inverters which are out at the panel. So I'll talk about them uh, separately, but what you'll find is the protections that you put in place are really the same for both, all right? So let's take a look first at this centralized inverter case. So what we have is we have power coming in, it goes through maybe some kind of net metering, and there's a, some type of a switch that either lets you bring in the solar power energy to your home or lets you bring in the utility power. Now, some people are completely off-grid and they don't have this at all, and that's fine. You can just ignore that piece of it. But, and this is sort of the more general case, where you can bring power from either source. And, and in this case, uh, you see the charge controller connected uh, to the battery system here, assuming you do have a battery backup system, and then an inverter, and then it goes out to some kind of a panel array, okay? Now, in terms of protection, um, it already should come with some protection, and if it doesn't, you might want to check with the manufacturer. But typically, the inverters in these systems already have some very small surge protection devices. I have one here that's very common. Uh, this is the type that came on my solar power generation system. This one's by Midnight Solar, and you can see they're just small, and they usually mount to the uh, inverter box itself. And so there's AC ones and DC ones, and you want to make sure you get the right size ones for your particular inverter, the right voltage ratings. So I'm not talking about those in specific. Those should already come with your system, or you can easily get them for your system, okay? Again, Midnight Solar seems to be a pretty common brand, but there are others as well. So I'm talking about what you can add to your solar power generation system to help harden it against the effects of an EMP. All right, so what happens when the EMP occurs, or even a solar coronal mass ejection, there ends up being a large conductive pulse that would come in on the power lines. And the risk, of course, is that could go into the house, or it could also kind of backfeed into the uh, solar power generation system, and we wouldn't want that. You might could easily could damage some of these components. And so here's the recommendations I have in terms of protecting it. In terms of the house, I talked about this in some detail in the previous video, you're going to want to add a good quality surge protection device. And there was one I recommended, but you can find any of them that you like. There's a number of great quality surge protection devices out there. Just look at their ratings and pick one that you really like. Uh, and then get uh, a few of these high saturation ferrites. Basically, normal ferrites will not work very well on very high current lines. And I do a whole video on that. Um, but you can get these high uh, saturation ferrites at my website, disasterprepare.com, and they've been specially modified to allow large currents to flow through them without saturating. All right? So this is the piece to protect the home side. And again, you can refer to the previous video for that. Now, in terms of the solar power generation, there's really just a few things you could do. You can, you can add some of those same high saturation ferrites on the wires that go from the inverter up to the switch. Okay? And that will help to keep some of the really fast, high-frequency energy from coming into the system, right? It tries to suppress those really uh, high-frequency transients. And then the other thing you can do is you can add a filter, an inline filter that goes between the inverter and the solar panel array, all right? Now, there are a number of different inverters that will do, or sorry, uh, filters that will do that. Um, the ones that I like, and I've hooked these up and tried them, and they did very well, they're, they're made by Schaffner. And um, there's different sizes. This will go to like 25 amps. If your system's 25 amps or less, you could use something like this. And they're very inexpensive, maybe like $70 or something. Pretty, pretty good deal. Uh, and then there's larger ones that'll go, you know, this one's a 50 amp and there's a 75 amp that's just like this one. They even have 100 amp and 200 amp gigantic ones if you wanted those. And these range on up to, I don't know, getting closer to $200, maybe 130 and then the 75 amp might be like 180 or something. They're, they're in that ballpark. And they, they all have these sort of easy disconnect terminals, so your, your power wires that come in off your panels go in here and get tightened down, and then it just continues on into your inverter. It's just an inline filter. And they do a great job of removing what I'll say is low to medium frequency energy, okay? And so that, that is really a useful thing. Again, I'm not going to sell those filters. They're already available everywhere. There's no reason for you to pay me to find them and sell them to you. I'll just give you the part numbers, and you can go out and buy them wherever you can find them cheapest and there'll be instructions on how to install them and all that, okay? And then you could also add for these, you know, this very long solar panel uh, wire between the solar panels and the inverter, you know, that might be 100 or 200 feet, you can put a broadband ferrite at either end of it, okay? And those ferrites, I do sell at disasterprepare.com, just look under broadband ferrites. 
Um, you might need like a one inch ferrite to go around you know, both of those wires, the plus and minus, you go around it together. So this is a common mode rejection where you go around both wires. That's different than these high saturation ferrites which go around one ferrite per wire, okay? So distinctly different. And these ferrites, uh, again, you can find them at the website. You'd wanna put one at each end, one close to the panels. Again, it doesn't have to be right at the panels, but, but relatively close to them and one close to the inverter, um, or, or if you install this filter, close to the filter, okay? Now, this was the centralized inverter. It ends up that if you look at the microinverter case, it's very similar, uh, and the protections are actually the same, all right? Now, the difference is that you have panels with small inverters usually mounted to the back of them, those microinverters. So that converts the DC voltage to AC voltage. So this, this line here is now AC voltage instead of DC in the other case, okay? But the protections are really one and the same you're gonna add a couple of broadband ferrites to that long line, one at each end. You're gonna add an inline filter. Now these filters are rated, I believe, to 250 volts AC. Uh, you can check, double check with the manufacturer, but I believe that's right. In DC, I think they're rated to like 1200 volts, okay? But again, this filter should be adequate for you. You could put a filter in. If you don't like those filters, find a different one. Uh, and again, you can use high saturation ferrites to go between this control system and the home. And then finally, you can use that surge protection device and high saturation ferrites up here at the top, okay? All right, so even though the systems are different, the protections really end up being the same. And that's because the weak points, the long conductors, and the interfaces to the utility grid are all the same, really, okay? So protections are about the same. That's the way I would protect them. Um, again, you can find surge protection devices all over the place. I recommend one on my website. I don't get anything from recommending it. I just recommend it because I think it's a quality product. But you can find others, like I said, lots of good surge protection devices. The filter, I'll put the part numbers for the Schaffner filters on my website. You can look those up. Again, I don't, I'm not trying to make anything off those. I just recommend them because they're good quality products. And then I sell the broadband ferrites. You can find those on the website. And the specially modified high saturation ferrites. Okay, and I did a whole video on those if you're wondering what that is uh, and what it means to be high saturation. Okay, all right, so if you have any questions, again, feel free to post them. I hope this was helpful.